Okay, so I wanted to wait a little bit before we made this video just because I wanted to kind of collect my thoughts and really think about what it is I wanted to say here. So today we're talking about the Vancouver Canucks because with the way things are going down, I have absolutely no idea what to expect. Now, we had ourselves word yesterday in the evening that we were expecting to see more Canucks positive cases, not just Hamannick and Gaudet, because with the way the Canucks practice was conducted on the day that Adam Gaudet had his positive test, where he was out there practicing with the team and everything, where they still continued practice, and despite the fact that Gaudet tested positive, they didn't immediately go into a protocol. In fact, they were preparing to play a game against Calgary Things really did snowball in the worst way possible, so today the Vancouver Canucks now have 14 players on the protocol list. Travis Boyd, Thatcher Demko, Alex Edler, Gaudet, Hamannick, Howerluck, Holtby, Horvat, Hughes, McEwen, Mott, Myers, Roussel, and Brandon Sutter. Not to mention there's one member of the taxi squad and three coaching staff members who have also tested positive as well. So a total of about 18-ish individuals within the Vancouver Canucks organization who have the thing. And obviously, before anybody goes into anything hockey-related, the biggest thing we can do is hope for these guys to recover properly because they have families, they have people that they really care about that could be affected by this a lot worse than professional athletes. We already spoke about Travis Hamannick and his daughter, who has already had respiratory issues in the past, and this is absolutely the worst-case scenario here. But, even away from the family side of things, we have 14 hockey players on this team that have positive results here. And as we have seen in New Jersey and Buffalo, some players just do not come back the same way. At the end of the day, this is a thing that even though the recovery rate is high, some individuals out there, whether they're pro athletes or not, they have long-term outstanding effects because of this. Some people's lungs get extremely modified and scarred up to the point that things are a lot different than they were before. So, before we talk about the hockey, before we talk about the scheduling, as we have been hoping for everybody who has come down with this thing, we are wishing speedy and full recoveries for everybody involved. That includes the 14 players on the team right now, that includes the extra player in the taxi squad, that includes the three coaches, and that includes all potential family members as well, because it takes time for symptoms to develop, and a lot of these people are going back home, staying with their folks. Bo Horvat has a newborn son, might I remind you. So, now that that's out of the way, just thoughts and prayers, I guess, to the Vancouver Canucks, let's go over what exactly people have been speculating could happen about how this has gone down. This is what Terry Jones said on Twitter. This was a very big statement. Reports out of Vancouver that the Canucks situation on a level beyond any team in sports right now. The protocol list is now in the double figures, and we didn't even know about this before, but the Brazil variant is reportedly involved as well. Forget about what this team does at the trade deadline. You have to wonder if they will be able to continue their season. And you know, with the way the NHL has scheduled itself up with the April 12 trade deadline and the May 11-ish end to the season, and the fact that we've been hearing it for the past year and a half, it's, oh, it's two weeks you have to isolate for in order to completely get rid of this thing if you have it, you really have to ask yourself how the rest of the schedule is going to go. Thomas Strand said that the rare piece of good news this week is that we have no support staff that have tested positive, so... There is a difference right there. Coaching staff, support staff, that is a little bit different. He also says that he is hearing that one person that is not on the list is a high-risk, close contact. So whether that means the taxi squad guy or one of the three coaching staff members on the team has that Brazil variant, that's what I'm assuming it means, especially with that high-risk, close contact subtitle given out. Chris Johnson says over here that as the scope of the Canucks situation widens, they are starting to bring players back to Vancouver from the AHL. They need reinforcements to serve their seven-day quarantines and be ready to play when the NHL season resumes for them. So, prospects, AHL guys. Oh man, Jonah Gadjevich is going to make his debut a lot sooner than we think, eh? That's kind of joking around, but we'll see how exactly that goes down and who exactly gets called up from Utica to play in the Vancouver system when those games start coming back up. I'm really honestly kind of intrigued, but we'll see what happens later on, I guess. Here's probably the biggest piece of news. It's from Pierre Lebrun. This is what he tweeted out. Via sources, here is the latest on the Canucks outbreak. Again, hockey is secondary. There are players and coaches affected, and that list is likely to grow, he says. 
the arrow is pointing rightwards and then curving downwards, this right here is the big update. The NHL is now proceeding on the assumption that the essential entire Canucks team will likely test positive. That's built into the league's planning moving forward similar to what happened in Dallas. There is a variant of the virus that the NHL has not seen before and is experiencing for the first time. The Canucks shutdown will last longer than what was originally discussed. They're certainly not playing next week. The league hasn't discussed potential new dates with the Canucks, but the NHL won't announce that for a while. The NHL will also very likely have to schedule North Division games past May 11 and likely use most of the buffer week from the 10th to the 14th. That may not necessarily delay the playoffs for the three US divisions if they're done by May 11th, as it's possible they start their playoffs while the North Division plays out the last few games of the regular season. That is a very interesting point right there. The NHL currently doesn't see using points percentage to wrap up the year, as they are still confident that all 56 games will be scheduled and played. With the possibility that perhaps maybe the NHL will decide one or two games don't have to be played at the end if those games are meaningless. So, for the Canucks, assuming this might be true, hey, if the Vancouver Canucks start all of a sudden really sucking when they come back, let's say everybody, even though they're all free of the virus, are still kind of in that lackadaisical, kind of lethargic state from being in the virus's grasps, if the Canucks play really poorly afterwards, which I don't doubt is a possibility, we saw it with some players in Buffalo, some players in New Jersey, also with the Toronto Raptors of all people as well, that Sometimes pro athletes just don't recover properly. If we have ourselves a season where the games at the end are meaningless, they're already eliminated, the NHL might just can those games. And, you know, if it gives a lot of our guys some more time to rest and a lot more time to recuperate, hey, the league's gotta do what the league's gotta do. And before we end this video off, I just wanted to say nobody in the comments go down there and start blaming anybody, blaming one player, blaming a guy. The Goddads did an interview with Patrick Johnson of the province, and they were told by the BC health officials that what they were doing, going to the grocery store, socially distancing and all that, was okay. They were doing the right thing. It's just they got unlucky. And for the rest of the team, it's really not surprising to see how it spread quickly, especially considering the fact that Goddad tested positive on the day that he was practicing with the team. And with all the positive cases coming out within the past few days, I don't know how likely it is that they all got it strictly from that practice, but you gotta remember, sometimes these symptoms take a while to show up, so I'm not saying I'm a doctor or anything, but the possibility that they might have just contracted it before the practice might exist as well, so I'm not really too sure what to think on that. You gotta remember, the Canucks were playing Montreal, and Montreal had some positive cases, or at least two players in Kachanyemi and Armia who had to go into protocols after that series, so... Who knows what could have gone down? The worst thing we can do and the most unproductive thing we can do is play the blaming game because saying, oh, these guys were out partying, these guys were doing this, doing that. No, they really weren't. I mean, Bo Horvat was at Best Buy trying to get a home speaker set. Yes, Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson, Pettersson's not even positive, by the way, were scootering around town. Yes. And as noted in the interview, the Godettes were just mostly going to the grocery store. So it's unlucky. That's it, plain and simple, unlucky, and all we can do now is not really try to point fingers or anything, just kind of wish that we have the best recovery possible for all these players, because at the end of the day, they're still human beings, some people recover from this better than others, so all we can do is just hope that the Canucks and the players and the staff and all that recover the best they can. I've been seeing a lot of Canucks fans saying, oh, we should just cancel the season, we're not gonna make the playoffs anyway. Let's kind of hold our horses on that. I know it's a lot different, from the Dallas Stars, because when Dallas got infected, it was at the beginning of the year. They didn't play any games to start off the season. They were off for like two weeks while all the other teams were out there playing games. It's different here because it's at the end of the year. And because the NHL has a super tight playoff schedule that they want to maintain and they want to have the draft and they want to have the next season starting up in October, they want to make things go back to normal for 2021-2022 and a team getting infected at the end of the 2021 season is going to change that drastically. That remains to be seen. We'll see how exactly that goes down. So for the Canucks, I mean, they're not in the playoff spot right now, but they actually did move up in the standings. Remember how they were tied with Calgary in terms of wins, losses, games played, and points the other day? Well, Calgary lost in regulation yesterday, so Vancouver got the move up in the standings. So there's a silver lining, I guess, to all this, but yeah, still sucks, doesn't it? Talk to me in the comments, what you think I hope you enjoyed this, but it's Ash Wilson, Lion 9, and 